Greetings from St. David's Lutheran Church here in Hanover. Good to have you with us again for this IT worship service. This is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost and a little word about this particular Sunday. We remember the Sabbath day. We call the Sabbath a delight. This is the Lord's day and the Lord will do for us what the Lord does. Feed us, forgive us, heal and help us. Rejoice at all the wonderful things that God is doing. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. On this particular day, I'm going to share two scripture lessons with you. I normally just read this. The lesson is the text for the sermon that will follow. And I'm actually going to be borrowing from both the using the psalmody and our gospel lesson for my message. Here's a reading from Psalms, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 8, to be specific. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, 
Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O oh Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The word of the Lord. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke the 13th chapter. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water. And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. And now let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the invaluable lesson we hear again today. We thank you for loving us, being gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And may we, in light of you and your relationship with us and the countless and endless blessings you give to us, May we live as your faithful disciples, living in thanksgiving and praise to you, our God, our everything. Amen. Well, in the gospel lesson that I shared with you, we find Jesus curing on the Sabbath day. Oh, there had been prohibition against doing that. And you can see that the leader of the synagogue is quite upset with both Jesus for doing what he did with this woman and for her and anybody else who might have a thought of coming in to be cured on the Sabbath day. But Jesus defends his action. He's basically saying, and I'll put it crassly here, folks, don't be stupid. You know, you're going to do some of the things that you need to do on the Sabbath, such as take care of your animals so that they're still with you the next day. Look at this poor woman. She suffered for 18 long years. Here is an opportunity for her. Here is the day that we are together, she and I, and I can cure her. And yes, I'm going to do that. Why does Jesus do that? Well, it's because our God is of such a nature that he is loving, caring, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. That we should feel moved to thank and praise God then is really pretty obvious. As she was moved, to praise Jesus for what Jesus did for her. This is certainly the case too with today's psalmist. Remember that first verse of our psalm, a verse that many of you may have memorized. If not memorized, you certainly have heard it any number of times before, and I'm sure appreciate it as I do. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. And then the psalmist goes on to basically say, and while you're at it, folks, don't forget all of his benefits, all of God's benefits to you and to me. Created us in the first place, gave us families, homes, the health that we have, and no matter what condition our health is in, we're still alive, we're still able to be here still able to take in a beautiful morning, still able to do God's work in various capacities. He gives us all that we have to live on. He redeems us through Jesus Christ. He is always with us and he promises us the gift of eternal life. So indeed, let's not forget God's endless countless gifts to us. Psalm 103, our psalm under study today, is a hymn for the presentation of a thank offering in the temple. Yes, don't forget to give thanks. One may recall that great text from Luke's gospel that is usually shared at Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Eve worship services, the story of the 10 lepers. You'll remember that of the 10, 10 of them are cured of their leprosy. Jesus sends them on to the priests in Jerusalem so that they can verify the cure and reinstate them to their various positions. And yet of the 10, only one, only one returns to thank Jesus. That can prompt the question, what about the other nine? In fact, Jesus asked about them, right? What about them? Yeah, why didn't they return to thank our Lord? We don't know. The story doesn't tell us. We can surmise maybe they were so excited they simply didn't think about it. Maybe they were trying to make up for lost time. So oh, this is wonderful. We're cured, but we've lost time. Now we've got to get, get to it here. Maybe they felt that they were only getting their just due. Then again, maybe they thought that Jesus of all people will certainly know that we are grateful, even though we're not returning with this Samaritan to give thanks. Our psalm today blends personal and national benefits into one hymn. In verses 1 through 5, and we read all these verses today, God heals individuals. And then in verses 6 through 14, we read the first three of those verses, God heals the nation. In verses 1 through 5, the psalmist summons his whole being to grateful acknowledgement of the saving presence of God, which has touched his life in many ways. Forgiveness, healing, rescue from death, long life. God is fundamentally forgiving. Sure, God makes demands. God has extremely high expectations of us. But God is loving, caring, and God is forgiving. Indeed, as we read in our last verse of this psalm, verse 8, Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. This verse echoes Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. It can also be found in several other places in the scriptures. Here in Exodus, the, the original source, we note that God forgave Israel after its apostasy with the golden calf. Remember that story? The stress there was on the forgiveness of Israel rather than the defeat of the Egyptians. Do we need to work at being a praising and thanking people? I think we do, and that includes yours truly. For it's easy for us to focus on the negative in life, in the world, 
there's a lot there right now to focus on that isn't very pleasant, is rather negative. We think of the war, the, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We think of the situation now between China and Taiwan. We think of the mass killings that are going on. We think of the pandemic, which is still sadly alive and well out there. And you can add many, many more things to this short itinerary. Yes, it's easy to focus on what's wrong in the world. Easy to then look at ourselves, maybe feel sorry for ourselves. Think we're not getting the breaks other people are getting. Feeling that God isn't really coming through for us in the clinch and other people certainly aren't either. And it's easy for us to go to those places that woe is me, I deserve better. And then when good things do happen, it's easy to, as was the case with perhaps with the nine lepers who didn't return to give thanks, it's easy to take it for granted. There are times too, maybe like you, when I'm praying a lot about needs and then I recall, but you know, I should also be thanking God for this blessing and that blessing and this other thing over here that I have received. Thanking God for my life, my health, God's presence in my life, God's promises to me. You know, maybe sometimes we kind of have to hit the depths before we emerge thanking and praising God. Have to almost think the worst of ourselves and our lives. And I'm not advocating self-deprecation at all. But sometimes when we kind of hit these rock bottoms, we can emerge through the power of the Spirit as stronger, more effective witnesses as we become people who are more grateful and feeling the need to praise the God for whom we have everything for which to be grateful. Verse eight, when we're down and out, when we're feeling really blue and in the dumps, verse eight can on those occasions maybe hit us the most right here in the heart where we live. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So when you and I get down on ourselves, when we're feeling like we're just not making the grade, that we're not getting the breaks, that, that life is working against us, and that we're not even very deserving people of the love of God, may we remember verses such as this verse in our psalmody for today. For what's that saying about life for us now? That God is here with us. God is compassionate. He's loving us. He's bestowing his mercy and forgiveness upon us. Always with us with an agape, an amazing, infinite love for you and me. Despite the fact that we're sinners. Despite the fact that we groan and grumble at times like God's people in the Old Testament. Despite the fact that we at times forget about God. God is here for us. My favorite verse of scripture, Hebrews 13, words of God echoed from Joshua. I will never leave you or forsake you. May that fill us with joy, hope, peace, and calm in life. Even when we're going through those tough times that we all go through. May we, in a word, be a praising and thanking people. We are infinitely loved. Love beyond measure. Let's live and act as if we believe it. Amen.
Prayers of Intercession for August 21. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster, that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress, especially those we have on our prayer list. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.